We start with a second session of short presentations. Uh, we have six, six presentations in this session. Uh, as before, the time is very tight, so try to focus on the presentation. It's only seven minutes, and we, we will try not to, to have more time on that. I will sit on the first uh, row, and I will uh, show you up when it's only two minutes left. Uh, and we will start with the first presentation that is by Leandro Do Carmo, Do Carmo uh, Agile Optimization of a two, two Excellent Vehicle Routing Problem with Pickup and Delivery. Good morning, everyone. My name is Leandro. So, here we present this work that I did to, uh, during my research stay in Vienna. So, it is in Agile Optimization of a Two Excellent Vehicle Routing Problem with Pickup and Delivery. So when we have a disaster occurring, some health agencies should provide an effective system of drug management in order to ensure the use of the drugs. We want to reduce the number of mortalities and we want to promote, promote a return to normalcy. So in this case, we have to promote to provide an effective distribution system in order to deliver drugs and medicines in disaster areas. So imagine here we have a central depot. This depot holds like chemical and natural products. So we should deliver these raw products to some intermediate facilities. These facilities are pharmaceutical labs. They use these raw products to manufacture medicines and drugs. And later we have to deliver these medicines and drugs in some first aid locations in a disaster area. So in our case, we are doing this by using drones because when we have a disaster, the roads might not be longer accessible by conventional cargo vehicles. So that's why we are using drones in this paper. So here, basically, in the first figure, we have a situation picture that we have some sensors in the area. So we have this gray area, I don't know if you can see. So this is the disaster area and we should provide the distribution the roads in this area by first here, delivering for the depot to pharmaceutical labs some raw products. So we pick up some medicines and drugs in these places. And later we have to deliver these drugs and medicines in the first aid locations in the disaster area. So the objective here when we are solving this problem is to minimize the total transportation time and also in the same time have to replenish these medical suppliers in the pharmaceutical labs. To solve this problem, we are proposing here in I the idea of agile optimization, which refers to the massive parallelization of randomized technologies, techniques, sorry. So this methodologies basically change the grid behavior of heuristics by introducing some randomness. So then we generate different high quality solutions each time we, we run this code, you know. So as we are doing this in parallel computing, we generate our several alternative solutions when we are running this code. So this is great to do real time optimization because we do this in parallel, it's very fast. And so we can do this to deal with the dynamism, the real world. So our methodology is composed of four different states. So we have the demo solution here, in which we start by, we start departing from the depot, visiting an node and returning. And the second part and third part are composed of the same series. Basically, we are trying to minimize the number of routes by doing some mergings. So we are minimizing the number of routes and consequently, we are minimizing the transportation time. And later we apply a local search to improve the solution. So the idea here, the agile optimization, is to run these by randomized techniques in parallel. So we run a lot of parallel runnings of this methodology. So at the end we select the best one for the decision maker. And here we use the same clock time because we do this in parallel. So that's the advantage of this methodology. And here I have some results that we generated. So here in the column gap one, two, we are just trying to see how 
much we can improve by using only a characterization. So here we are comparing the first column is the deterministic version of our methodology. The second one is our methodology itself. So we are able to improve like 8% by only using the adjustment. In the column gap 2-3, we are comparing our methodology with another heuristic that exists in the literature. So we were able to improve almost 20% of this methodology. And in the column 2-4, we are comparing our methodology with meta heuristic methodology. So meta heuristic is more advanced. So in this case, we are in average 7% worse, but it's interesting because we were able to find two better solutions for the, set, for the solution 42 and 45, I think so. And here, what is, is interesting is the CPU time, because as we can see, the best new solution in this, col in this column, they require like, more than 1,000 seconds to generate the solutions. And we generate our solutions, okay, they are worse, but in zero seconds, in average. So when we have a disaster situation, we cannot spend like 1,000 seconds to generate a solution because we should react quickly. And here we are just changing the number of parallel runnings to see the behavior. So as you can see, if you have more Parallel runnings, we have more, we have better solutions, but this depends on hardware settings. So, in some conclusions here is that we are using the agile optimization. By using this technique, we are able to improve around 8% in this scenario. So, we are very competitive with the results because we were able to find two better solutions in the CPU time. It's zero seconds and future works include to react to unexpected events because when you have a disaster you know more disasters can happen e to include new emergency locations or to consider some unavailability of stock because we need more drugs and medicines for instance and then to deal with the world dynamism that is changing every time and thank you. That's all. We don't have time for questions now at the end. If there is a little time, we will have us before, uh, have some questions at the end. But for the moment, we go to the second presentation. That's by Maria del Carmen Gallego. Uh, gender roles and stereotypes about males and females' competences in STEM subjects in the training programs of pre service teachers. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Well, uh, my thesis is about gender roles and stereotypes about males and females' competences in STEM subjects. STEM uh, are the, the subjects related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And pre-service teachers are the teachers that they are studying to be a teacher at primary, at the primary school, and also at a high school. Saying that, I would like to start with saying that uh, some uh, global issue that I think already know that uh, the percentage of women in the STEM studies and careers is really low in the representation of women. Uh, we can see this uh, global issue not just in Spain, also in Europe, and West, West, uh, also in the Western countries and uh, US. Uh, I will show you now some data focusing in Spain. Uh, this is the data from the Spanish ministry in 2018. And we can see here, for example, uh, women enroll and men enroll in engineering, industry, and construction uh, category. Okay? So most of them, um, the, the percentage of women, are, are not, aren't reaching the 
But there is one exception, reaching the 20 percent, for example, in naval and ocean engineering. And there is one exception in nanotechnology, reaching the 40 percent. We will move on into another category, for example, computing category. Here we can see that um, the percentage of women are really low in software and application development. And also it's reaching the 20% just in multimedia engineering. Um, finally, in the category of science, for example, we can see in the physics, it's reaching the 20% in the total of 25. Uh, in mathematics, it's a little bit more. And chemistry is reaching the 50%. And in bio biotechnology, as an exception, is uh, uh, reaching the 60%. And the gender roles and stereotypes um, is connected with this um, issue, global issue. And for example, focusing on teachers, there are, there are several studies that mention um, that teachers are uh, transmitting these gender roles and stereotypes about the students' competencies in STEM subjects and careers. And for example, um, they tend, some studies mention that they tend to attribute um, different uh, competencies uh, for example, to STEM uh, studies, um, technological and, sci and scientific success, for example, for girls, they attributed this for hard work and not for ability. And when the girls um, present some failure in the subjects, they attribute, the teachers tend to attribute it for uh, lack of ability and not of and not for um, lack of hard work, for example. Um, so these gender roles and stereotypes that they are promoting, that they are trying to say that um, uh, males are much better, for example, in um, science and technology fields, and, and women are much better in social sciences and humanities, this kind of gender roles and stereotypes in education can um, present um, that girls have a lower self-concept because of this different treatment of teachers uh, and the, so the, the support of teachers are different. For girls, the, this support is really low, um, supporting them to continue with the STEM field. So also um, this um, differential attitude and differential treatment from teachers, they will, it will uh, influence the academic choices of the students as well as their uh, perception of ability, their performances, and uh, their academic choices. Well, my thesis is um, the main theory for this, for my thesis, will be the um, expectancy value of achievement-related uh, motivation. Um, this theory I mentioned, for example, in one hand, the um, psychological factors, and in here we can find, for example, the perception of ability and the values. And on the other hand, the developmental factors. And in here we can find the gender roles and stereotypes, the sex norms, etc. Also, to complement this, um, this theory, you can see uh, more that I will use, like a gender schema theory from them. Then, but I, I don't have time to explain all of them. Well, the research question is uh, trying to answer where the STEM are the gender roles and stereotypes in the academic uh, training of uh, these primary and secondary uh, pre-service uh, pre teachers. So the objectives, uh, the first one is more focusing to analyze this uh, transmission of gender roles and stereotypes in the training of uh, the pre-service teachers and I will use the qualitative methodology. And in the second, in the second one, um, 
the objective is to measure the pre-service teachers' attitudes and, and opinions related to these gender roles and stereotypes. As well, uh, I will use the different, different methodology, and it is the quantitative methodology. So here, um, this is my, my field work that I, I spent more than one year uh, trying to get this data. Uh, for the qualitative methodology, I interview, in our depth interview, 24 participants. 11 of them were pre-service primary teachers, and the 13 of them were uh, pre-service secondary teachers, and I, these um, participants were from universities of Barcelona. And secondly, um, moving on the surveys and the quantitative methodology, uh, uh, there were a total of 310 participants, 184 were uh, pre-service primary teachers and 126 pre-service secondary teachers. They were also from universities of Barcelona, but also from Madrid and Extremadura. Um, I need to say that I am analyzing um, this, uh, the surveys and the interviews is a lot of data, but Finally, uh, the preliminary results, just focusing on the interviews, um, the 24 uh, participants, all of them pointing out that uh, they believe that women are much better in the social sciences and uh, humanities, and also uh, they pointed out that uh, men are much better in um, the tasks related to the science and technology. Um, just wanted to say that this is the prelimar preliminary results. I need to continue analyzing uh, deeply, really deeply with the interviews, and also I am analyzing to get the data from the surveys. And that's all. Thank you. The next talk is from Patel Dubnica, and it's titled Towards the Characterization of Pure Duroc Peaks. Um, good morning, I'm from India. Myself is Bhumika Patel, and I'm from the Department of Statistics and Operation research from the University UPC, and my director is Pau Fonseca Itasas. I don't know who anybody will be related to these projects because of the most of people who are speaking with uh, social networks and supply chains, which I am from the land of India, so it will be a land of agriculture, so my project will be related to the Duroc Peaks. The title will be Towards the Characterizations of Pure Duroc Peaks. A, actually, the keywords are the farm animals feeding pattern in automatic feedings. We are working on the project. We have the combined project with the University Autonomo de Barcelona and the our University of Polytechnic Catalonia. There is a one farm located in Catalonia with the 7,000 of pigs. So we are working on that pigs. The purpose of our research is to understand the behavior of the pigs in a farm located in Catalonia. Uh, this is the key aspects having impact in economic and health aspects and has been studied by the several authors. But actually we are working with they are living in the farm, how they eat, what they eat, and made the food consumptions. Uh, feeding pattern implies a consumption of a drug quantity through the food. And the analysis is needed in order to avoid the side effects. There is a 7,000 speak in this farm, so we are making the clusters of this, but each in block, we are making the 10 blocks. Each block, they have a 20 pigs, and they all have added uh, automatically machine chips. When they are adding some one box for eating, automatically start that machine chips, how they are eat, and one drugs which are be in, included in their food, how they affect on their food in the avoid the side effects. The starting from the casual diagram, we derive a specification and description language, conceptual model to portray, uh, portray the animal behavior. 
uh, data was collected by an automatic chip thanks to automatic chip otherwise we can't we can't collect that data because we have to work with the animal so each animals were detailing when they enter and they leave the feeding area some basic patterns obtained from a preliminary statistics analysis are uh, also included in order to understand the basic characterizations of animal of a farm basically the model the objective of this project is to which is the drug which given by the food to the animals after the feeding the drugs will be remain in that animals because when we are applying with the non veg to the public there is a hygienic so they reduce the side effects what they are taking with the group or with the foods so the main object of the studies it will be that here we are derive some casual diagrams the activities how they are lying the drinking sleeping playing depending on the activities how much food they are consumptions how much food they are consumptions then the drug will be that much of drug will be in that in that particular pig so that is be uh, able to eat uh, of meat that pigs to the public or not so we have to basically derive the ratio of the uh, of the drugs which had a consumptions by the animals so this is the casual diagrams uh, from the agriculture to the food production the food the food, uh, food sufficiency the feeding machines there are some automatic feeding machines there are some the people also are give the food of that peaks so depended on food quality quantity and the future for the work is this is the casual diagrams we have to transfer in second description language uh, that is sdl when we are transferring the schedule diagram in sdl so we have the multi agent simulations on that work so we can simulate it the drug consumptions by the taking by the food of the peak so basically this is the idea of this research i don't know anybody has interested in this but i am very much affected affected with the animals so my research projects on live research and i like to work with the pigs and to behave of them so thank you so much that is already such but we have to some research to collaborate so we can we can provide something to the public to the societies and do us something better which they have already so that's it thank you so much okay the next talk is by kim saldo and it's used land use and land cover data assessing the spatial distribution of illnesses in Catalonia, a biographical approach. Thank you. Okay, good morning everyone. Hope you are all well, especially uh, after we've been all filled up by this uh, coffee break. So I'm Kim Zalo, I'm a first uh, PhD student from the University the Autonomous uh, University of Barcelona, especially in the Institute of Environmental Science and Technology. And I'm here to present my research, which is entitled Land Use and Land Cover Data, Assessing the Spatial Distribution of Illnesses in Catalonia, a Biogeographical Approach. We are focused on the relationship between human health and, and the environment. And it's known that the environment might provide uh, health to humans through six major pathways, which are uh, providing psychological and cognitive benefits by providing physiological benefits, decreased infl inflammatory and other non-infectious um, disease, regulating the transmission and the prevalence of, of some infectious disease, providing us with aesthetic, cultural, recreational, socio-economical and spiritual benef benefits and provi uh, provisioning tangible benefits, uh, tangible materials and resiliency. But especially, particularly, uh, we are interested in how the environment might influence the territorial distribution of the illnesses in Catalonia. So as we are environmental scientists, we wanted to proxy this environment 
uh, in a holistic point of view. So we wanted to gather a data set that contained um, that contained political issues from the from the environment, contained the socioeconomical activities, community and social behaviors, and as well the coverage, the flora and the fauna that you can find there. And uh, we came up with the idea of using land use and land cover data that as for you, the, uh, as for those of you that don't know what, what, is, what is this, uh, it's a data set that can be read uh, through two, two approaches. The first is land cover, which uh, specifies which type of uh, biophysical material is in a specific area, so the flora and the fauna. Uh, and then you can read this uh, through the land use approach, which, which are the human activities that are involved in that place. Yeah. So gathering this as a proxy of environment, we wanted to, uh, this is for you to look, uh, to know how it looks like. It's, for example, uh, if you have like uh, the same area in different years, here, here we have uh, uh, Foch Reserve, uh, the Foch Reserve uh, River Basin, in one in, in 60, and 2009, and if you have the same categories, you uh, by comparing the, the same area through different years, you can extract some conclusions, which are very useful in the assessment of the global change um, issues and and driving forces. So. You, know, you not only you uh, are able to know the type, a specific type of uh, land use and land cover that, that is in, in a specific area, you can notice, you can assess the driving forces that are behind this, um, this specific type. And then uh, as this kind of data is international, um, uh, international um, repl replicate or, or done internationally, you can replicate this kind of studies and regardless of where uh, you are. And as for the human health database, we are counting with um, electronic health records, with, which are the medical records from the Catalan Health Service, from all the people who are taking part um, of the public service here in Catalonia, which is a very huge uh, population. And these are divided um, among 274 primary health care centers and gathers well the socio-economic and social characteristics of the individuals um, and gathers their, their specific, the specific geographical location, which is um, grouped or gathered in the census areas where they are uh, dwelling in. And according to National Academic uh, Academy of Medicine report, this kind of data is a complete data, is an uh, update data because it's done by, by the, the, the doctors and, and annually, is a low cost area, and it tackles a large population, and it provides with a uh, new opportunity for applied research. So, so far we've conducted a review of uh, 41 articles uh, which are tackling um, a specific he human health outcomes and relating, relating it with land use and land cover or the environment but proxied by um, land use and land cover data. And we have uh, pointed out four limitations. None of them are able to, um, to find out casual relationships between uh, the, the environment and the and the human health, but uh, they are talking about associations. So there are no, ca no, no causal uh, relationships. As well, they are dealing with a short set of illnesses. So we hope that by using this, this other kind of data, which, which, which um, gathers a lot of uh, different illnesses, we are kind of surpassing these limitations. As well, we have uh, known that, or we have discovered that the methods um, that they use to, to attribute to each individual the amount of, uh, of the environment um, that, that belongs to, 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 every, to each person, it follows several methods. So you can do it by, for example, uh, calculating the, the percentage of the, of the environment that is closer to you, but you have to define how closer, five met meters, 10 meters, one kilometer, so there are a lot of methods, no? And finally, 
and they are not counting on time series data set. As we are approaching it, or we are approaching, approaching, sorry, approaching it from 2000 and 2018, we hope we, we, are, we are using a new uh, strategy. So we are proposing a new methodology uh, with a new uh, approach that, it's, that aims to surpass some of these limitations. And what we are proposing in particular is um, going a little bit further of the classical epidemiology, uh, epidemiological approach, which is kind of explaining one variable from another, look, uh, look one independent, va independent variable for, from, from an, an independent one. And what we want to do is uh, approach, approaching it uh, differently. We want to uh, analyze, so study the dynamics of the environmental data from the one hand, and separately study the dynamics of the, of the human health data and extract some patterns and then compare these, these patterns. By doing this, the, the statistical approaches are more, limit, are more limited, are more accurate, and we, we hope that we will um, find different results. So that was all what I wanted to say and many thanks. So we go to the last one. It's by Natalia Garrido. Um, uh, no, 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 excuse me. <laughs> yeah. It's not the last one, still. It's Carlos Acuña, and the title is Special Dependence Between Stock Markets with Uncertainty Index Measures. Hi, uh, my name is Carlos Alberto Cuña, and I will present to you this work, a special depends within a stock market with uncertain index measure uh, by Catalina Olances, Salvador Torra, um, and me of the uh, Big Center of Barcelona University. Uh, the motivating in this work is analyze the possible interactions uh, between the stock market and how affect uh, the analysis, uh, the risk between, between the stock. Uh, in, this, uh, in this method, it's uh, important to uh, choose uh, what type of distance uh, select uh, we can see uh, the geographical map. In this map, uh, we can see uh, some stock markets uh, and we use uh, the geographical distance. So if uh, C2 or more countries uh, are neighbors, uh, we consider that the stock market is uh, neighbor too. But uh, the literature uh, says that the geographical distance is a bad criteria because it's a static a static distance and no um, uh, show uh, the, uh, the uh, stock market behavior. So it's necessary to uh, propose uh, in, in this, in this work a uh, uh, distance, a uh, dynamical distance. Uh, in this case, uh, it's based in world uncertain index and world trend uncertain index. And we con with, uh, with uh, this distance, uh, we analyze the spatial dependence in the stock market and can be used to uh, indicate the systemic risks in the last uh, 50 years. Okay, the first part in this methodology is define the 
the criteria of distance. Uh, we used uh, the World Incertite Index, it's proposed by I, Bloom, and Fulcheri. Um, we uh, they are close to uh, distance, uh, we count the number of the times uh, the world's uncertain, uncertain, uncertain uh, report in the economical, economic uh, intelligent unit and the other distance based in Google Trend Uncertain Index is proposed by Castelnovo and the track and they create uh, this index based in a Google Trend and uh, they uh, count the frequency on the people search uh, a specific port in, in Google. In our case, uh, they, uh, they create uh, our index using uh, 10 words, austerity, bank, uh, bank uh, dollar and others for create uh, our, our distance. Uh, the next part in, in this methodology is using uh, the moral index. The moral index is a typical tool in economic, uh, spatial econometric, and indicate the spatial dependence with, uh, between the variable on the study. In this case, uh, well, uh, the, the, index, the moral index have a two version. The global uh, is given by this equation. Uh, that the um, RIT indicate the returns between the stock market and W indicate the spatial relation between the stock market uh, defined with the distinction, distinction mentioned before. And uh, the, the next index user is the local model uh, indicate the spatial dependence between around the stock market and the last part in this uh, methodology is based in one and patent. Uh, we propose uh, uh, models to uh, understand the systematic be uh, between stock markets. Uh, this is a, a base uh, database and we use in this work. Uh, we have uh, 46 stock market of uh, 45 uh, countries around the world. Ah, uh, finish. Okay.